Danger Dolan. From clump souls to pooped themed adventures, we count 15 of the weirdest games to come out of Japan. Number 15. Katamari Damacy. No, it's not about a cat squid, although that would be pretty awesome. Katamari Damacy actually translates to Clump Soul. It's a game about collecting a giant ball of stuff that magically sticks together for some reason. Although it's actually a pretty well-known game, so I doubt I had to tell you that. The reason you're rolling your highly sticky ball around is to collect enough items to create a constellation of stars and the moon. Why do you need to do this? Well, your dad, the king of all cosmos, accidentally destroyed them all, of course. Number 14. Face training. Worried that your face isn't strong or cute enough? Well, worry no more, as this DSI title has come to the rescue. Follow various exercises that will improve your face for some reason. This title is also known as Facening. I'm guessing this is a mix of face and training. But the fact that it's been shortened implies that this is a thing that people regularly do. That baffles me. I don't really know what results are expected from following facial exercises. Maybe it's meant to reduce wrinkles or something. Number 13. School days. Saying that erotic visual novels are big in Japan would be an understatement. Sure, they're not played by everyone in the country, but the user base is big enough that a new one comes out every week or so. But the fact that this game includes some pixelated genitalia isn't what got it on this list. If you don't play the game right, and by play I mean choose the right options when prompted, things get downright disturbing. In one of the bad endings, a character creates a fountain of blood when their neck is slit open. All the while, the murderer laughs in a pleasant and totally non-creepy way. If you feel like thwapping your meat to spurting blood and chilling laughter, you can run this game on a potato-powered toaster. How do I know this? Uh, don't ask. Number 12. True Aniki. Apparently there's a giant subgenre of games in Japan that translates literally into idiot games, and True Aniki belongs to and possibly epitomizes the genre. The game is chock full of extremely buff men that shoot lasers at each other, to the point where it's described as homoerotic on just about every website that describes it. The gameplay is your classic side-scrolling shmup, Except for the fact that instead of playing as a spaceship or psychic girl in laces, you play as an inexplicably flying buff man wearing a loincloth that shoots lasers from the top of his head. The story, if you can call it that, revolves around a tyrant overlord who is hoarding all of Galaxy's protein powder and it's your job to stop him. Number 11. Catherine. For those of you who have played this game, you know exactly how hard it is for me to describe it but I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. In the daytime, you're dealing with the main character's adulterous life, where he has to choose between a straight-edge chick and a promiscuous happy-go-lucky girl. When he falls asleep, you climb a tower of blocks that you can pull or push. The aim is to get to the top without dying, while also sometimes avoiding a monstrosity that loosely symbolizes the problems the main character is going through in the daytime, such as a giant-ass demon with a tongue and teeth coming from exactly where they shouldn't. Weird storyline and visuals aside, it's actually a really fun game. You should give it a whirl. Number 10. Mr. Mosquito. In this game, you play as a mosquito living in a Japanese household that needs to draw enough blood from oddly specific body parts in order to survive the winter ahead. The most famous or infamous body part to draw blood from requires you to do so during a woman's bath time. I'm going to leave it to your imagination as to which part specifically you need to draw blood from. The game requires you to draw blood at just the right speed, and if you don't, the human stress meter will rise. When the meter is full, they will slap you and you get an instant game over. Number 9. Takeshi's Challenge. To say this game is weird might be understating it more than a little. It'd be more accurate to describe it as unique, because that's exactly what it is, especially when you compare it to every other video game that came out at the time. Instead of one cohesive game or a collection of fun mini-games, this is an assortment of strange challenges delivered on a Famicom or NES cartridge. One of the challenges requires you to do nothing for an hour. Another requires you to sing karaoke into the Famicom's controller microphone and get a good score. There's also a bunch of different requirements to finish the game like quitting your job, punching an old man, and getting a divorce. Number 8. The Hoochie Play. Japan has a problem with perversion. It's not uncommon for a man, usually elderly, to try and cop a feel of another woman on the train. This is just one example of this problem, so one developer decided to create a game based on this same line of thought. 
Instead of groping, you play as a weird looking elderly man who tries to peek at presumably underage girls while they're getting changed. That's it. That's the entire game right there. Since it's on the 360, the level of nudity is severely diminished compared to if you're on a less sensitive platform, but somehow this does not reduce the creepy factor whatsoever. Number 7. Toilet Kids. This is another single track minded game, except instead of being perverse, it's a game dedicated to toilet humour. Although I guess if you really fucked up, you wouldn't consider it perverse. That's really besides the point. The game starts with a young boy sitting on the toilet. The next thing you know, we're playing an auto-scrolling over-the-head shooter similar to 1942. There's a total of four stages and the controls are as basic as it gets for the genre. There's a normal shot, a charge shot, and a bomb. There's no power-ups and there's no real challenge to be found. So I hope you really do find poop funny or you're not gonna have much fun here. Number 6. Cubivore, Survival of the Fittest. This is perhaps the strangest adaptation of Darwin's theory of evolution. You play as a blocky looking animal thing that wouldn't look out of place in Minecraft, and your goal is to eat other cube animals and mutate into the best cube animal of all. Mutation via consumption is more than a little weird, but the way you mutate is outright bizarre. Your limbs and colour combinations is what defines your character. If you're not strong enough, you go through the love tunnel and make a new little cube. If you eat enough and then make love enough, eventually you'll be able to kill and eat Cubivore, thus taking your rightful place at the top of the food chain. Number 5. Japan World Cup 3. I don't even know if this really classifies as a game. I mean, everyone online seems to refer to it as one, but it really feels more like a betting and illicit drug simulator. To play the game, you go to a website where you'll see a bunch of wacky horse and jockey combinations, and you bet fake money on the one you like the look of the most. Personally, I like the limousine horse. And you watch the race. That's the end of it. There is no other point to Japan World Cup 3, apart from perhaps trying to see each predetermined cutscene available. But if you're impatient, you can buy a DVD on Amazon for $34.49. Number 4. Seaman. Think of Hey You Pikachu, but now replace Pikachu with a variety of aquatic and amphibious creatures with a perturbed looking man's face stuck to the front. Oh, did I mention the English version is narrated by Leonard Nimoy? If you don't turn on your Dreamcast and play Seaman once a day, in real time, your Seaman could die, and if you go through the effort to look after Seaman, he will either insult you, or give you random facts. I don't know why anyone, even someone from a culture as weird as Japan, thought this would make a good game, but it was made, and now we have to live with the fact that it exists, and no matter how much we try to, we can't erase Seaman from human history. Number 3. Muscle March. You thought I was done with the homoerotic games, but you are very wrong. This is another game based around retrieving protein powder because apparently Japan just can't get enough of this sort of thing. But instead of playing a shmup with weird visuals, this game employs motion controls to make you feel macho. Your character chases a protein thief who crashes through walls leaving various bodybuilder pose size holes which you have to assume while holding the Wiimote and Nunchuck in order to catch up with him. Number 2 LSD Dream Simulator According to the official report, this game is based on the Dream Journal an artist from Asmic Ace Entertainment have been keeping for 10 years. But when you put LSD in the title, don't you think that's rather damning evidence? Putting Dream Emulator on the end doesn't remove the previous three letters, you know. But yes, this game plays like one big acid trip. You play as first person exploring psychedelic landscapes. Each time you touch something, be it a wall or a purple elephant, you move to the next scene. There's no point to this game, it's just a sightseeing tour of Nishikawa's dreams. Occasionally you might bump into an enemy of sorts. But all they do is make you wake up or force you into another dream. Number 1. Hate a full boyfriend. What could be weirder than a game about an acid trip? A traditional Japanese dating game where you date various species of birds in a post-apocalyptic future. And I know what you're thinking. No, they're not anime representations of birds made anthropomorphic. They're just pictures of different species of goddamn birds. Also, the main character is the only human and she lives in a cave. But that's not the end of it. If you play through the game enough times, you can eventually go through murder mysteries, help ghost birds to move on, and also discover what caused the human species to decline to the point of near extinction, and what allowed giant intelligent birds to take their place. That's it for this countdown, and have a go